shell in a box in a docker environment using a docker compose file if you don't know what shell in a box is stick with me to find out more hello and what's up guys medium guy here welcome to the next video on my channel in this video we're going to see how to set up and run shell in a box service as a docker container using a docker compose file so if you don't know what shell in a box is it is actually a service that exposes a web service and is accessible through a web browser which provides the access to the linux shell by which authenticating through a linux user you'll be able to have the access of that user through a web interface so without any delay let's get down to work so this is the github repository of the image that i'm going to use to create the shell in a box service actually through the content that is written on the readme file i created a docker compose file and passed in the required environment variables to be able to run this over here you can see the configurations actually the environment variables that you can pass to the running container so you'll be able to configure your container based on your use case so i'll switch to the terminal in here i'll hit ls as you can see i am in the shell in a box directory in my github repository which i'll put the link down below so you'll be able to access my github repository where i'll put all the files and configurations and everything that i use and create in my videos so no worries about the codes let's stick to work so if i nano the docker compose file over here as you can see there is only one service over here the image is exactly the same image that I showed the GitHub repository for it. I'll also put down the link to the Docker Hub page for this image. So I've given this service a name and the restart policy is set to always. And there is only one port that is mapped to the host machine. So I'll be able to access this container from the outside network. The only port is 4200 map to the 4200 inside the container and over here in the environment variables i've passed the siab which stands for shell in a box password i've passed in some random password the siab sudo i've passed true which will actually grant the sudo privileges to the user that i'll be accessing the shell in a box through the browser and the siab user of passed a random username so this is the actual username that will be created inside the shell in a box container as a linux user and on the volumes section i've passed the slash which is the root directory of my host machine to the slash host in a read-only mode so this container will be able to actually access the host machines file system but in a read-only mode later i'll show you what i mean by this so i'll hit ctrl x to exit the nano and if i say docker compose up dash d as always this will actually try to create a network and the shell in a box container and attach that network to the newly created container so if i say docker compose ps I'll see that the shell in a box container is up and running and by going to the browser with the exact same port I'll be able to access the shell in a box service so if I go to the browser I'll hit the IP of the server that this is running on and exact same port as you can see it is automatically redirected to the HTTPS but also you can see that it, it is certified with a self-signed certificate so the browser will through the connection is not private warning and if i just hit advanced and proceed anyway i'll be actually accessing the shell in a box service so also if you wonder how to create self-signed certificates and also use it in 
nginx environment i have these videos on my channel i'll put the links down below so as you can see in the shell in the box service i've got something like a linux terminal and a prompt that is asking me the login credentials so if i say docker i'll hit enter and as the password i'll put in some wrong password so we'll be checking if it throws an error i'll hit enter and as we can see it says login is incorrect so i'll say docker again and pass in the right password as you can see i'm inside the containers terminal so if i like for example say who am i i see that i am the docker user if i say cat slash etc os dash release I can see that this is an Ubuntu distro, the version 22.04 and like for example I can say sudo apt update and because I've passed the relevant environment variable the siab sudo true I'll be able to actually run my commands with sudo privilege. So I can go ahead and do anything that I want as I would do in a normal Linux terminal. So like for example, I'll say sudo apt install nano to install nano. And now if I say nano a.txt, you can see I have the exact same experience that I would have in a normal Linux terminal. So I'll hit ls I see that exact same file is all created over here so if I go back to the terminal I'll say docker exec dash it I'll pass in the containers name and I'll say bash I'll hit ls I'll see the slash home and if I hit ls you can see that exact same file exists over here also I should be able to nano and as you can see, I installed the nano through the shell in the box and I can access it through the original terminal that I created inside the container. So as the last thing, I'm going to cd into slash host. I'll hit ls and I see that I can access the host machines file system over here. I'll see the home shell in the box. I'll hit ls and I see the exact same docker compose file I'll say cat docker compose this is actually exactly the same docker compose file that I used to create this exact container so if I say nano docker compose file I'll get an error saying that this file is unwritable also if I say sudo nano docker compose again I see that it is unwritable so if you remember in the docker compose file we pass the read only switch at the end of the volume that we mounted to the slash host so this is the exact same reason that we cannot modify or create any file also if I say echo hi inside the b.txt as you can see it throws an error saying that this is a read-only file system so that's all for this video i hope you learned something new in this one and you have a total overview of what shell in the box service is and also i recommend going through the documentation and playing with other environment variables that are available in this container and of course you'll be able to find other containers that provide the exact same functionality and as you saw the only problem with this is that the shell session that we get through the shell in a box service is only inside the container and we won't be able to really do some handy stuff which we'll be able to do in the host shell itself so in the upcoming next video i'm going to actually install this service in the host machine itself and not in a container so don't forget to also watch it i'll put the link down below whenever it gets ready and also don't forget to watch other videos on my channel i've got cool videos about cool technologies 
and please don't forget to like and subscribe which will help grow the channel and with that i hope to see you in the next videos